Yo, what's going on everybody? It's the Flying Pig here on Flying Pig United with another cheeky little Manchester United news roundup for you of the day's goings on at the club and all the latest on Mason Greenwood as well and uh, any other goings on that we've got to get into today. We've got some a few things to talk about. We'll cover them all on this show and give you the latest rundown of the United news of the day. Do us a big favour at the start of this stream. Smash that like button on it. Give it a thumbs up. Give it a share around if you want on social media as well. That'd be much appreciated. And do get involved in the live chat as well um, with the community of legends here. Have your say. Do get involved. It's an interactive show. We'll be uh, ducking in and out of the live chat as we go along. So do get in here. Have your say. But also uh, remember, be respectful, my friends, with the current situation and the sensitive topics that are being discussed. That's right. Um, guys, thank you for joining us. We've got a few things to talk about today, uh, other than Mason Greenwood as well. But I guess we will, you know, start with the, the big news of the day. Um, hey, exclusive, Aaron, Man United since 1982. Sea talentless, uh, Man United again, Albert Chelly, Blizzard down, Chrissy J, Ray, and everybody else as well. What's going on there, Ray? And everybody else, thank you for joining us. Do get yourself involved in the chat. Drop the like and have your say. Right, guys, so Mason Greenwood has been released on bail. That is the big news of the day here. Let me get the information up here from uh, the BBC website a couple hours ago. Mason Greenwood, Man United footballer, released on bail. Man United footballer Mason Greenwood has been released on bail after being arrested on suspicion of raping a woman. The 20-year-old 20, 20 was also arrested on suspicion of assault on Sunday following allegations on social media. He was then further arrested on suspicion of sexual assault and making threats to kill on Tuesday, which obviously we talked about yesterday, um, gave you the latest rundown on that. So he's further arrested and they've, um, you know, been doing investigations and questioning. But uh, he's, yeah, he has been released on bail at this moment in time while further investigations take place. Um, of course, the magistrates have been granted a second extension as well um, to keep him in custody until Wednesday. But he has now been bailed pending further investigations. So, um, so yeah. That's that's the situation as it is. He the, listen. This, this doesn't mean one thing one way or another. Really, it just means uh, that there's an investigation taking place. He is innocent until proven guilty at this moment in time, and he's been released on bail. Um, so, so that is the update. Uh, Jonathan Gallagher says, "When is his court hearing?" Well, there's no information on that at this moment in time, as far as I know. It's early days. Obviously, he's just been released on bail. There'll be more information that comes out um, very soon. Um, we have some, of course, the statement yesterday from the club, which basically just backs up the fact that he will not be uh, featuring for Manchester United. So in case of any of you were wondering um, whether or not he's going to come back into training or anything, that is not the case. Of course, Manchester United has suspended uh, or suspended sales of his shirts and stuff on their merch site as well. And, um, you know, lots of different sponsors and things like that associated with Greenwood and, and Manchester United have also suspended their sort of business relationships with Greenwood at this moment in time uh, we've got a couple more statements from from uh, different companies that are associated with Manchester United um, so you know DHL of course the, uh, the logistics delivery company whatever you want to call them um, they've recently come out now and uh, made a statement on this situation as well and just said that uh, you know their relationship is is with Manchester United and they don't uh, they don't condone any sort of violence whatsoever and uh, and they their their partnership with United encompasses the team as a brand and the team, not any individual within the team, which is absolutely fair enough. So, uh, yeah, this is what they said. They said, while we do not tolerate any kind of violence, we will not be commenting on a situation while the investigation is ongoing. So they're not going to actually outright make any uh, direct reference to it. But they did say our partnership is with Manchester United encompasses the team, the club and the global brand and not one specific individual. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's not it's not looking very good for um, for Mason Greenwood, in all fairness, guys, just because of, well, what has uh, come to light so far. And also there is a pending investigation in terms of a PR nightmare. This is about as bad as you could possibly get for the lad. So, yeah, I mean, I don't see there's any way coming back, but you, you never know what's what comes out in the in the light, obviously, over the next investigation or however long it takes. So we just have to wait and see. What happens with the police investigation? And, um, you know, he is is pending further investigation. So this isn't over. Uh, this is just, the uh, you know, the news that he has been released at this moment in time. Um, but please, please be respectful in there, guys. Don't get uh, words like that in there. Um, LJ6, what's going on, mate? Uh, he was a good prospect 
Um, it, oh, well, yeah, I mean, allegedly that is the case. I mean, this is the thing. If that's what's happened, then there's no excuses for it. There's no coming back from that. No Manchester United fan worth their salt, I think, would want anybody playing for the club who's alleged or who's been proven uh, particularly to uh, to have done some things like that. So if it is indeed proven, if uh, in the court of law it's found that uh, Mason Greenwood would be guilty of any alleged crimes, then, um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Then he's... he's Mate, I mean, you know, there's 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 going to be potential time and things like that done. Uh, never mind not playing for United, you know. Obviously, um, imprisonment and things like that is a strong possibility as well, depending on, you know, whether or not it's it's a guilty ver you know verdict and all the rest of it, or a guilty, uh, you know, what I'm saying. So we will have to wait and see. Um, with, there there was some reports coming out, guys, about players uh, unfollowing him again. So I wanted to give you the update on that because it is interesting, right? Just to see, you know, what's going on with his teammates. Um, and all that sort of thing on social media. And um, so, you know, there are a few players that uh, reportedly unfollowed him a few days ago. You know, people like Davide De Gea. Um, it says a number of them, including Ronaldo, Paul Pogba, Edinson Cavani and David De Gea appear to have stopped following them on social media. This is a report from the Daily Mail today um, at 11.13 there by Chris Wheeler. So... Um, there's a report that's, I mean, I haven't gone into it. That's why I'm saying where it's from and who said it, because I haven't gone on Instagram and personally looked who's following it all, all the whole list. But this is on the dailymail.co.uk where it says that Ronaldo, Pogba, Cavani and David De Gea appear to have stopped following Greenwood on social media. Um, also, there was a source with, from within the club that is quoted as saying from uh, the Daily Mail website here, um, as this is a direct quote from one source at the club, everyone is very shaken up. This is very different to the normal things they have to deal with. So, you know, there's definitely a big uh, effect that's taking place at the club just in general. Everyone's feeling this. Everyone's been affected by this. The friends of, uh, of, of, of Mason, but also just all the, all, the, all the people who work at Manchester United. Obviously, this is a bit of a, a dark cloud, a shroud that is hanging over Manchester United right now. It's just been the shittiest transfer window and of course with all this negative stuff going on man it's just a terrible time at man united right now so uh yeah the daily mail report the number of the green uh greenwood's teammates have unfollowed but there were a few reports a few days ago about certain players uh unfollowed him too like victor lindelof marcus rashford and i believe that they are actually still following him so there's another report that says that uh well actually the daily mail again reporting today at 1204 uh, um, this is Justin Feck. <laughs> Sorry, but anyway, that's his name, Justin Feck. Um, Justin Feck reported on the Daily Mail that Manchester United stars Marcus Rashford, Jesse Lingard and Fred start following scandal hit Mason Greenwood on Instagram after a host of players unfollowed him the hours after arrest. But I don't know if that's the case, whether or not they just didn't unfollow him to begin with and there was just bullshit stories going around. I don't know. But this is what's reported by Justin Feck. On the DailyMail.co.uk, Man United players have started following teammate Mason Greenwood on Instagram after his arrest over alleged allegations of rape and assault. Um, the latest to drop Greenwood 20 was Victor Lindelof, but having unfollowed his colleague earlier this week, the Swedish defender has now restored the striker to the list of 298 people he is following. Um... As reported by Sports Mail, Marcus Rashford, Jesse Lingard and Fred were not following the star on Monday, but they too have now added Greenwood to the people they follow on Insta. Listen, I don't know. I'm not going to get too deep into this. This doesn't mean anything. I personally think that, um, you know, I personally think that maybe there's there's just, uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, an error there. I think like maybe they didn't unfollow him to begin with. That's what I think. <laughs> I don't really know, guys. But it is interesting just to see what sort of a backlash, what sort of reaction maybe there is from you know, Greenwood's teammates in regards to this whole situation. Um, <laughs> Father Ted, feck off. Exactly, I know. Justin Feck, fecking house is John Hawkins. Feck off says Stephen Carr. <laughs> hey, I'm just reporting what they say on the Daily Mail there. So yeah, Justin Feck, <laughs> suggesting that people like Victor Lindelof has re-followed him. But uh, I don't know if that's exactly 100% the case. But these are the reports on the website. So... Yeah, I mean, personally, it's a fucking rag anyway, isn't it, the Daily Mail? But, but um, you know, the, 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 they've got to have some substantiated claims here, surely. What the feck, says Wacker Sakram? <laughs> well, Olufemi says that's how it should be. He is your teammate. The world has become so fucking weak. 
You stick with your guy through bad and good times, says Olufemi. I mean, maybe if, you, if your mate's got in a little bit of a dust-up or, you know, he's going through a tough time in a relationship or whatever, but not if they've, if they've uh, allegedly or potentially um, committed sexual assault and uh, threats to kill and all these sorts of things, bud. So actually, I couldn't disagree more with you, Olufemi. Fair enough. Look, innocent until proven gu guilty and all that kind of thing. Like, we have to wait for the investigation to take place, obviously. But, man, I'm sorry to say, <laughs> if it turned out that somebody was, one of my friends was, uh, you know, if it turned out they went and they had a trial and they were proven guilty, of course. Now, I'm not saying right now it's time to jump on the bandwagon and completely throw them under the bus, you know, because at this moment in time, there's still a lot of factors. Although there may be some audio clips and stuff that's come tonight, which is absolutely sounds disgusting. You know, we have to wait for everything to be substantiated, everything to be proven, everything to, you know, you have to have due process and wait for the, the process to take place. So, uh, yes, maybe, okay, maybe nobody should make a knee-jerk reaction right now. But at the same time, you know, who you associate with, who you are friends with, who who you, uh, you know, who, uh, who, basically who, who you have in your life, you know, it's up to you. You don't, you don't have to associate with uh, anybody who is a dodgy bastard, mate, if you don't want to. So, you know, I'm not saying, I'm not personally saying that that's what's been proven and that's what's the, the, the case. Obviously, it's allegations at this moment in time. But hey, if anybody wanted to unfollow a rapist on Instagram, you know, or wherever, for whatever reason, then I think that uh, that's good. <laughs> you know what I mean? In terms of like other cases here, you know, other cases, obviously I don't really, I don't really agree with what you're saying. <laughs> but yes, we have to wait until the law decides. I see what you're saying. Okay, fair enough. But ask yourself this question, Olufemi. So you are, you're, you're absolutely right. We do have to wait until the, to, 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 to what's uh, proven. But at the same time, if you're in, if you're friends with that, with, uh, with that player, and you hear that audio recording, wouldn't you also have an, a base base an opinion, perhaps? I don't know. Listen, it's that those those players are their own people. They're their own, you know. They're their own. Uh, they've got their own minds. So uh, everybody's going to be different and have a different response to to hearing that audio or hearing uh, that alleged audio. Um, so if they do know the player, if they know the voice, if they feel, you know, obviously they can base an opinion, um, not just on allegations, but because there was a leak of of. Uh, you know what came out obviously there's there's a little bit more to it than just an allegation here you have to remember there is some sort of a uh information that's already been released to the public there whether it was you know obviously it wasn't meant to be but there you go um k cadet says is anyone else having slight buffer issues oh no guys smash a one in the chat if we're coming through loud and clear and there's no issues smash a two if um if it's buffering and you're having all sorts of issues in the chat let me know i just need a bit of feedback here yeah, I mean, that's true, Bubby. He says, rape is a massive charge. They need to be 100% sure, not 99% sure. Spot on, mate. Spot on. And as we were talking about with what information has come out so far, i.e. some photos and that audio clip, in terms of um, actually proving, like proof of of, uh, of of sexual assault, as much as, it, you know, like uh, there's implications from the sounds and the, you know, like... Uh, you know, there's the, the, it's actually, you, you, they have to investigate a lot of other stuff. Now, there may well be audio before and after. They may when, when we be lots of other recordings. There may well be more evidence that we don't know about, of course, which is what the investigation is all about. So we have to wait and see, guys. We have to wait and see, obviously. Um, uh, <clears throat> buffering like a madman. Oh, no. Okay. Gash. <laughs> all right, then let's, uh, that's not good. <laughs> Let me just, uh, hopefully it's, Hopefully it sorts itself out, guys. Hopefully it sorts itself out. A bit of a buffer there. Maybe give it a cheeky refresh. Uh, there's 200 of you guys in here right now. Do us a big favor. Drop that thumbs up on the button. I know it's a gastastic, depressing topic. We are going to cover all the rest of the Man United due to the moment. But drop that thumbs up. Show your support. Give us a boost up there on the YouTube algorithm. Uh, give it a share on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, wherever. And uh, let us know what you are guys are thinking, actually, as we go into more into this as well. Okay, so... Um, so, yeah, so on Tuesday, Greenwood was further arrested by Greater Manchester Police on suspicion of sexual assault and threats to kill and spent a third night in custody. Um, he was first detained, obviously, on Sunday after um, some, you know, pictures and audio uh, circulated on social media. Um, so, yes, uh, there's there's obviously been a big, what would you say, a reaction from the fan base, uh, 
already. I mean, I do believe in due process and I do believe in innocent until proven guilty. But I also do believe in everybody's own rights to think what they want to think. So, you know, but we have we have to wait and see what happens, guys. That's what I would say. Like, it's a very sensitive topic and it's a very um, depressing one for all, everybody involved at the club. But we just still have to let uh, everything, all the legal process take place. So on Monday, Manchester United removed Greenwood's merchandise from the store as angry fans returned um, uh, shirts, of course to the mega store with his shirt with his name on and that kind of thing it's just an actual, actual pr nightmare nike suspended the player's sponsorship deal as well uh shirt sponsors team viewer came out and said they were closely monitoring developments official partners cadbury announced that greenwood will not feature on any of their marketing products either dhl have come out and addressed the situation also he was removed from fifa 22 uh update on tuesday um you know uh yeah on all platforms pc uh playstation and xbox and uh yeah he's he's he's, he's not even in the offline modes guys so he's basically been you know erased erased at this moment in time or suspended from fifa he's not on there either <clears throat> his fifa ultimate team item is still available actually but uh it's not in packs anymore don't think and also reports that a number of the club stars had unfollowed him. So not a good, not a good week for uh, for Mason Greenwood. But as I say, there is obviously a bigger picture in here. There's a potential, you know, I have to use that word carefully. I have to be careful what I say. But a potential, you know, victim in all of this that we've got to uh, that we've got to think about as well. And let's just get some love hearts in the live chat for uh, for 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 the victim, alleged victim, guys. You have to be careful what you say. But yes, alleged victim. A number of star players uh, have unfollowed the guy, though. So that is pretty much the latest uh, revelations on Mason Greenwood, guys. Um, yeah, all of the partners of Manchester United have come out and completely uh, said that, you know, they, they want to distance themselves from that. They don't support any sort of domestic abuse or violence. And obviously, most of them are waiting for more investigations uh, to take place and more information to come out. <clears throat> but we are very likely, as far as the football club goes. So this is also from the Daily Mail, right? So, uh... Manchester United squad shocked and appalled after Mason Greenwood's arrest. This is what's on uh, the, the, the Metro.co.uk, but also the Daily Mail say that a number of Greenwood's teammates are shocked and appalled at what they saw on social media. Everyone is, this is a source. Everyone is very shaken up. A source told the Daily Mail. This is very different to the normal things they have to deal with. Yeah, so uh, not good times. <laughs> not good times at Manchester United, peeps. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Okay, right, before I get on to the next Manchester United news, we've got a lot of Manchester United news to get into today, other than Mason Greenwood, which is good, because I'm sick of bloody talking about it. But before we do, we've got to get into the live chat and uh, see what you guys are thinking about this topic before we move on and put a, you know, a, a close on it for the day. There's not much more that's come out, guys, other than the fact that he has been released on bail pending, you know, pending a further police investigation, basically. So, yeah, that's it. He's now been bailed pending in further investigations. <clears throat> I'm going to get into the chat now for a few minutes. Once again, always be respectful of the topic and everything we're discussing. It's very sensitive. And there is an investigation taking place. 20 likes away from 100 likes, guys. Drop the thumbs up and let's be having you. Let's have your say in the chat here then. I mean, that's, yeah, Robert Cersei's. That's definitely what they will do. Obviously, they're going to investigate the whole thing. I mean, he, he says, I hope they will investigate Greenwood's girlfriend. Uh, might be some, I mean, I personally... You know, what you've just said is absolutely accurate in the sense that they have to make sure everything is 100% the case. I wouldn't go as I wouldn't go and suggest that anybody has been faking anything at this moment in time. Absolutely not. But, um, you know, if we're talking about history, not everybody 100% of the time always does tell the truth. Not everything is always perfectly in context. But at the end of the day, you know, it's damning. At this moment in time, it's damning. What we have seen is damning. We know that uh, previously, maybe there's been some, uh, you know, some some murmurs of this sort of stuff going on. And what has uh, what has been the case is, well, really, things like this sometimes get covered up. Things like this sometimes, you know, there's court injunctions, super injunctions, all these sorts of things that sometimes these businesses try and do. I mean, you know, I think uh, United did a did a super injunction with that whole Giggsy thing for a while when it came out about gigs and everything years ago and um you know the club basically had some sort of a uh you know a, a super injunction where it couldn't be talked about for a certain period of time i believe stuff like that can happen so but 
the fact that it was leaked, obviously, the fact that it's been put on there in the public domain, it just means that now it becomes a public and a, and a police matter, obviously. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, guys. Uh, okay, so so I wouldn't go as far as to say anything like that. You know, it's a very sensitive topic. You can never, you could never, you know, accuse somebody of making anything up like this, guys. You just, you know, in my opinion, but, you know, like you say, they need to investigate the situation. They need to make everything, sh make sure everything's proven and founded, of course. <clears throat> Catalan King 94, what's going on? He should only play if he's found innocent through court. There will be more evidence coming in the coming in the coming days. Catalan King 94, spot on, mate. Yes, more investigations are taking place. And um, yeah, we'll find out more about, you know, any potential... Uh, charges any potential you know uh trials and things like that um but end of the day guys end of the day you've got to get you've got to you've got to let the the legal system run its course here on uh, on the whole matter and there is an expression you know innocent until proven guilty and i do fully believe in that myself you know i fully believe in that myself so uh but but, but also you know it doesn't look good. Damning, damning stuff has been coming out, obviously. Parallel Sons, what's going on? Says Ramsey's still injured, though. Um, Neil Duffin, what's going on? He says, if I was innocent, innocent after what was posted online, I'd defend myself to hell and back. What a devastating situation, says Neil Duffin. Yeah, absolutely. So as far as we're aware, right, Mason Greenwood um, is yet to, uh, you know, form any sort of comment or public statement or anything now of course there has been a police investigation going on that he has actually been in custody so maybe that's why um but in terms of releasing some sort of a statement to the public i mean neil duffin you make a very very good point there mm -hmm. i mean yes <laughs> that's uh, that's if if it was allegations against me that were completely false then absolutely you know i'd be defending myself to the to the hilt too but he's only just got our police custody we have to wait and see what happens um tactician tom thank you very much for your comment this is my brother getting in here from america uh oh interesting okay well it's a bit speculative there's a case going on i don't know how much we can talk about there but tactician tom says i don't think mendy was released on bail seems a bit odd they have released him on bail the evidence is damning quite odd could it be she refuses to press charges if there isn't a case well um i'm not going to get into that but um just in terms of the what you said about the evidence being damning and a bit odd about him being released on bail. I mean, maybe, but then somebody, I think uh, I read earlier on that um, that Adam Johnson was released on bail, wasn't he? Uh, wasn't Adam Johnson released on bail? I don't know if it really means that much. And then obviously he was he was sent down. He was sent down for, you know, um, uh, fucking whatever it was, sexual assault of a minor. So, you know, uh, to be honest, I'm not so sure if him being released on bail or him not being released on bail is too much of a indicator of, you know, of the situation there. Was Adam Johnson released on bail or was he not released on bail? I don't know. I mean, in, in regards to the bail and all that kind of thing, look, there's investigations going on. If the investigation finds that he's, that he's innocent, then you know, that's one thing. If they find he's guilty, it's another. But um, I mean... <laughs> That's your opinion, Big God Bob. Fair plenty. Thank you for the two pound super chat there, Big God Bob. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm not going to read it because I don't want to say the words, but hey, fair plenty. Yeah. yeah, that's true, Stewie Pope. I totally agree with you, my son. He says there are two sides to a story. Always remember that. That's right. And we're actually waiting to hear both sides of the story yet. We don't even know either side of the story. Like you just said, there is a side to the story from from um, you know potential alleged victim here, but. You know, also we have to wait and see what what, every, what 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 other information comes out. What I would say is, though, guys, I'm not making light of that audio recording that came out because that is absolutely disgusting. And if that that needs to be proven that that's Mason, that needs to be proven, obviously, and uh, that that is all as it seems. It wouldn't. And again, I'm not I'm not saying anything against any uh, allegations or victims or anything here. But again, these things need to be proven. In the past, there has, of course, been things that have been, uh, what's the word, maybe fabricated or taken out of context, context by people in legal situations. Of course there is. So you've got to make sure it's 100% accurate, 100% um, legitimate, and, you know, 100% uh, as it seems. And I'm not saying it's not. And I'm not saying it's not, but 
you do have to wait for that process to take place where everything is better than is 100% guaranteed to be um, to be true. Joe Boom Boom says, looking for more evidence. Absolutely. Okay, uh, Shaggy Scooby, thank you for giving us a bit more information there. He says, Adam Johnson was on bail, but got a court date. Greenwood hasn't. Okay, okay. Well, it is interesting, you know, like my brother said there, there is quite an interesting point, I guess, then, that he's been released on bail. But, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily uh, read too much into that at this moment in time. <clears throat> Two sides to his story. The proof is there now. He is liked because he is English, says Roy the Boy Kino. I mean, I don't know about that, mate. I mean, everybody, before this incident happened, I think most people did think, yeah, you know, everybody liked Mason Greenwood. He was a future star, obviously, and a great player for Manchester United, and he was going to go on and probably do bits for England in the future too. So I don't think, any, I think people were on board with Mason big time until a few days ago once all this has come out, obviously, and these allegations have come out. Um, so... Yeah, Neil Duffin. Ah, oh, yeah, fair play to you. He says, problem with two sides is we can't unsee or unhear what was online. I feel sorry for the kids who heard uh, uh, whose hero is Mason. Right, yep, 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 yep. Um, let the police do their Get job, guys. Says Blizzard son. down. Get um, in there, <laughs> I mean, I, listen, I know. DL, listen. Listen, uh, I mean, there's, 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 in, there's, there's the, the, the evident, or well, what, what I should say is what's come out so far in terms of the audio is absolutely damning and disgusting, mate. But like I say, you've got to still let the police investigation take place to make sure that's all 100% correct, of course. Um, Amar Hazik, thank you so, so much for subscribing. And Little Hero, AJ, thank you for hitting that subscribe button, guys. Guys, if you're new to the channel, you might as well hit that subscribe button. Get yourself involved in the live chat. Have your say. Let us know your thoughts. Do get in the chat. Um, we are going to cover all the rest of the Manchester United news in a bit, but we're just going to just you know put a pin in this Mason Greenwood thing in a minute. But we're going to we're going to finish uh, discussing this topic. It's the biggest topic of the day, obviously. Uh, once again, drop that like on the video. We've got over 100 likes on the stream. Thank you, everyone, for dropping the like. Let's see if we can get 150. Smash that like button. Smash the sub. Click the bell, and let's be having your opinion in the chat. Very true, uh, Nafa Radal. He says people too quick to judge on someone. That's social media trial right there for you. Ordinarily, Nafa Radal, I under totally understand. And yes, you're still right on that occasion. But like ordinarily, when there's allegations against somebody, there's nothing, there's no sort of public evidence that comes out. Really, usually when there's an allegation, there's an investigation that takes place behind the scenes and they find said evidence. But on this occasion, there was obviously a leak which has taken place um, and, uh, you know, on the alleged victim's Insta. And so for that reason, it's it's been put out there in the ether. And because it's out there in the ether, um, in there, my son. it's hard to say uh, it's it's already been in there, swayed in one, in, in, in one direction, obviously, because of how disgusting the audio was, mate. Let's just be honest. And that's what's been connected to the case. And then there was also... This is a damning piece of information as well. Just the fact that he was further arrested on further, um, you know, uh, what's the word? Crimes uh, such as threats to kill. So hang on a second. So what does that really mean? I mean, you don't have to be a rocket scientist studying at the University of Rocket Science to, to sort of understand that maybe they have, they've had, it been, uh, had a bit of a look at an investigation and maybe found a little bit more, which is why they've asked for more time, which is why they've rearrested, which is why they've then further arrested him on other counts. So, you know, uh, it's a damning situation is all I'm saying, guys. Let's just be totally honest about it. Nobody's guilty. Nobody's innocent at this moment in time. Innocent until proven guilty. But what we know so far that's out there in the public is not a good look. That's all we can say, really. It's not a good look. <clears throat> Yeah, Robin says the audio is damning. It's hard to refute. Uh, yeah, Miss Five to Eight, lad. Um, not too sure, Dub Guy. Uh, Pig Nike already broke his contract. Teammates unfollowing him. United stopped selling the shirt, etc. I hope he won't be back where he had his first shot. Well, fair play, Miss Five to Eight. You know, if he's if he's proven guilty and uh, you know everything that we've heard is completely substantiated and true, then yes, I agree. But. But uh, we have to let that process take place, Miss 5 to 8, lad. And, and actually, I don't think they have broken his contract, have they? I think they've just 
suspended it or maybe they have dropped him entirely actually let me go back and find that that nike uh, information because i did have a minute ago i've lost it but you know they definitely either suspended it, him um or maybe they have dropped him already i'm not too sure madhouse says how many people in a pub threatens to kill someone let's wait people good point i mean listen like there was there's a lot of different times when people say oh i'm gonna kill you or whatever it doesn't mean that obviously there's any sort of malice or serious threat behind it but again just using my own personal opinion here my own uh common sense if and i'm not saying it's the best common sense ever but my own common sense to suggest that um you know i don't think anybody's getting arrested for saying oh i'll bloody kill you you know oh i'll bloody kill you you know i don't think anybody's it's all about context it's all about weight it's all about you know so come on we've got we, we uh, I, I'm not I, anyway. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna say that there's a police investigation going on, and really, we gotta wait and see what happens. Everybody's innocent until proven guilty. He's not been proven guilty yet. He needs a fair, fair shake of the stick. There you go. Um, hey, Rushmano, thank you very much for getting in here. How are you doing today, boss? He says subscribe to the channel. Yes, uh, if you're new, hit that subscribe button. Much appreciate. We give you all the latest news in a no bullshit way. Um, the Roy, the boy Kino, the only person really getting locked up was a French man. Why is Graham getting good, such good treatment? I don't know about um such good treatment, Roy, the boy. He's only just been released from custody, right? He's been released from bail. They've been investigating for days. They asked for extra time to investigate, and at this moment in time, that is how it is, guys. That is how it is. When we know more information, we'll let you know. If it's a case of uh, you know, uh, I don't know, victims not wanting to um press charges or you know we'll give you the information as it drops but we don't have a clue we don't have a clue at this moment we've got to wait for that information to come out throw him back in says Shekhar Goblin I mean at this moment in time he can't be associated playing with Manchester United my friend at this moment in time oh unless you mean throw him back in jail <laughs> it's all right, okay. um Brew Cooper, we can't, uh, I'm not going to mention that one. <laughs> it might not be enough evidence in terms of reach a conviction level, says VK Dean. Precisely, we need to wait for more stuff to come out, boss. Imagine if Greenwood was watching this channel right now, says Jay, and we ever see one. Uh, my thoughts on Joe, I'm sorry, on Paul Scholes toe biting? I mean, it's fucking weird, mate. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's odd, and it's disgusting. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, fucking chew away. <laughs> you know what I mean? In the grand scheme of things. But it's, oh, it makes me feel sick. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, Jay says, what if nothing happens? Will he be welcomed back? Great comment, mate. Tough comment to answer. We don't know what the process is at the club. We don't know what other information is going to come out. What other evidence may come to light. We don't know guilty verdicts. You know, uh, we don't know trials, innocent innocent guilt we don't know imprisonment no imprisonment we don't know listen it depends entirely on what is proven my friend entirely on what is proven i don't know guys i don't know i mean i don't think he'll ever play for manchester united again that's just my opinion he might go and play for another team i think another team might have him i mean i actually saw yesterday right so uh so yesterday it's quite quite interesting timing actually so there was a, a famous author who i forget her name now damn it somebody will know val something um who who uh who sponsors Rafe Rovers in Scotland right she's got she's their shirt sponsor anyway she's pulled their sponsorship because they signed a player oh what's his name shit anyway they signed a player who's a convicted rapist from a few years ago Val Kilmer that's it Rafe Rovers yep they they um they signed a player who's a convicted rapist from a few years ago and she's obviously like uh you know uh completely disgusted as is a lot of the fan base at Rafe Rovers she's she said she's stopping supporting the club after 60 years and all the rest of it and that's it because they signed a rapist and she's totally against it and she thinks that you know it's a family club and what sort of a message does it send when you're ignoring somebody's checkered past like that and you are signing a player you know uh, just based okay might be a good footballer yeah might be a good footballer um but ultimately you've got to look at somebody's previous you've got to look at somebody's character and when it comes to stuff like that it's just a terrible pr move for the club i mean listen rafe rovers obviously we've all heard of rafe rovers um but you know i haven't heard of them for a while i haven't really heard them in the news this is the first thing i've heard about rafe rovers for a while 
and it's about them signing a rapist. You know what I mean? So from that moment on, people will associate Rafe Rovers with, you know, you might as well add an extra R to the name. Rafe Rovers Rapists. <laughs> you know what I mean? Guys, like, no, 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 don't do that. But you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what people will associate. It's it's absolutely uh, a bad PR move for the club. So from that point of view, it's it not there, completely Mike's ruled out. out. Other clubs have signed convicted rapists before. Um Get in there. You know, uh, Greenwood to Rafe Rovers says Sheko. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean, lots of people have signed people with, uh, you know, uh, yeah, charges against them, such as things like that. Stan Collymore is another one. There's a few different players in the past, obviously, that have been signed by other clubs. So I wouldn't rule it out, guys. I wouldn't rule it out. But I personally don't think he plays for Manchester United ever again because of how big a family club is and it's not even the fact that he's guilty of it at this moment because we don't know it's all is innocent until proven guilty but um because it is such a pr nightmare because of what's come out and what's looking damning at the moment it's kind of uh yeah who, who's who's gonna want somebody who's alleged to have done those sorts of things even if it's not found guilty in a court of law to to sort of be at their at the club we have to wait and see we have to wait and see what the club decides but I do believe in due process. I do believe in innocence until proven guilty. I do believe we have to wait and see Mason Greenwood's side of the story, obviously. And we also have to super, wait for the police investigation chat. to take place and to reach a conclusion. And once all of that's happened, then we have a, a, f a fair basis to make an, a, a decision of opinion on as a club. Um, but right now, it's a horrible situation for United. But, you know, you've got to, you've got to uh, also let the process take place because there have been situations in the past where people get things wrong. And, um, you know, you're... you're, you're, you're you don't want to um you don't want to destroy somebody's uh, life unless it's absolutely the, the 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 you know proven to be the case of what they've done <clears throat> oh i know shocking blizzard down absolutely shocking i mean paul again that's a generalization i don't think everybody worships the royal family i personally don't and also you know if there if there's and also you're generalizing massively just because one person is alleged to have done stuff in the royal family, obviously in a sick, in a, in a, on a sick island or whatever the fuck it is, doesn't mean that you, you're tiring everybody with the same brush again here. So <laughs> I wouldn't say that that's, that's fair. Just like it's not fair to say that all young footballers, you know, are, are entitled, uh, you know, uh, potential fucking sexual assaulters or whatnot. That is not fair. You know, it's not fair. It's uh, it's not it's not the case at all, really. I do think that, you know, modern footballers in terms of the youngsters, they're given way too much, way too soon. I think they do have big egos. You know, they're on they're sauntering around at fucking 17 years old on 10 grand a week, turning up in their fucking nice beamer or whatnot. Then they get to 20 and they get a big fat contract, you know, huge, huge money. And uh, and they think they're all Billy Big Bollocks and they think they can just do whatever they want. But again, this is a generalization. It's not everybody. There's still some people out there who do have their head screwed on, who are just hardworking people who enjoy the football and who keep well grounded and stay grounded throughout their careers and do a lot for other people. You know, you think of people like, I don't know, Marcus Rashford and what he's doing with his spare time. You think about people like David Beckham um, throughout his career when he was growing up and stuff. I mean, yeah, he might have been walking around with a sarong, not but a posh spice, but he's not uh, But he's not hurting anyone, he's not doing anything wrong, he's staying humble, he's staying grounded, he's helping charities, he's doing the rest of it. He might still be a megastar, but he still remains reasonably, you know, reasonably down to earth, really. So, um, you know, I don't think we, we can say that about everybody. It's just, listen, it's, it, it's actually a, a metaphor for society, guys. Um, there's always bad people in every walk of life. Doesn't matter which country Get you go there, to. Doesn't matter what profession you are. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You could go to anywhere in the world. Get you'll find there, great people. You'll find horrible people. You'll find uh, people who will help you, who will save you. You'll find people who will hurt you. You know, that's, that's it. It's, that's life. That's life. And that is the same for every single place on this planet and every single uh, society. <clears throat> thank you for subscribing there james mcdonald i appreciate you hey big up there solo tamua what's going on man shout out to the man united agenda how you doing there brother thank you for joining us and james mcdonald subscribe courtney donegan as well thank you for getting in here hit, hitting that subscribe button really appreciate you guys um getting in yeah exactly vkd and it's a societal problem this is a societal issue this isn't a football issue this isn't a young footballer player you know prima donna issue this is nothing this is just a societal issue mate 
But, you know, you do have to say that a lot of youngsters get given too much too soon now when they're professional footballers. And maybe that does affect them growing up, developing as a person when they're teenagers, etc. And I'm not talking about Mason or anybody in particular here. I'm just saying in general, I think that that's got to affect people when, you know, they're all superstars and they're given so much. and They're wrapped up in cotton wool and they're on six figures a week when they're 20, you know. Hello there, Kojak Football Shack. What's going on? How are you doing, man? Thank you, Solo. I appreciate that, my man. Get in there, my, my friend. Um, Paul Porter says, but I'm jumping on the bandwagon because look at Ronaldo. He was accused and yet people believe. Well, OK, well, yeah, I mean, Ronaldo was accused. That, that's the thing. Anybody can accuse anybody of anything, right? But there has to be foundations to those. There has to be an investigation. There has to be evidence. There has to be proof. There has to be, you know, uh, cause. And I'm sorry to say, but you can't just... Uh, say that anybody who's ever been alleged to have done anything definitely has done it because that's not true you know like uh, Cristiano Ronaldo for instance I mean okay you can believe what you want to believe and look who really knows but I personally don't think I personally don't think that he's the type of person that could do that I mean look you can never judge a book by its cover I always thought Mason seemed like a really really nice guy but uh you know that was that was um yeah look it's it's obviously a horrible topic, but to say that there's never, ever, ever been anybody that's been falsely accused of anything is 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 completely bollocks. Let's be honest. There's lots of people out there who are trying to get money, who are trying to make a name for themselves, who are trying to, you know, ruin somebody or who are trying to, you know, uh, you know, so I don't think. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't, I don't think yeah, you can you can I don't think you can. uh lay that at anybody's door really mate it's obviously you've got to look at each case by case basis if there's evidence if there's more information that comes out in this case we can make an informed decision and so can the police um but in regards to uh ronaldo i, I don't i don't think so <laughs> i don't think so uh, um, hey, Rushmano, thank you so much for the 152 likes update we got 152 likes drop a thumbs up if you're getting in here well, there you go, Shamir Qureshi. Okay, fair enough. I don't know too much about that whole Johnny Depp case myself, but I mean, yeah, from the I've heard a few recordings, and she and uh, I mean, she definitely seems like a bit of a, a lunatic. <laughs> Let's be honest. So, uh, yeah, but I've only heard a couple of audio recordings. That's all you can really. You know, it, it only tells so much of a story as well. Like we've all had heated arguments, guys. Listen. So me and me and Mrs. P, right, okay, over the years, fucking hell, if we haven't had some blazing rows, it's just relationships for you. Now, obviously, I'm not going to lay my hands on her or anything like that or forcefully, you know, do anything in the bedroom like that, of course. But in terms of, um, you know, arguments and, and being caught at your worst, fucking hell, probably if you had an audio snippet of me ranting at her sometimes after she's fucking giving it the big one and we're having a big heated argument, man, you'd probably think I was an absolute monster. <laughs> You know, um, but if you had an order, account, and same goes for her. So, um, but but we're still nice people. You know, we still try to get on. We're still, you know, that's how it goes. There's always going to be context. You've always, but then again, you know, there's context and then there's, you know, like if we're, if we're just isolating the audio that we heard from the Greenwood incident or the Greenwood audio that's alleged to be, you know, him, then uh, that's a different level. That's not just that's not like angry arguing, you know, that's like, well, it's, uh, you know, it's a, it, it's audio of a, essentially what could be a sexual assault, essentially, you know, that's what the alleged audio is. And so for that reason, it's a different level of, <laughs> do you know what I mean though, guys? Like, honestly, you know, if you heard, uh, if you heard some people arguing out of context a lot of the time, then, <laughs> then it, it wouldn't paint the best picture. True dark by design. Had the world at his feet. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Carl Carlson, what's going on? In today's digital age, it can become much easier to fabricate false audio evidence. True, we have to wait for the investigation to take place and then for them to substantiate what the evidence is and also make sure that it's 100% correct. So yeah, definitely, mate. I, look, it wouldn't be the first time anything's ever been faked. It wouldn't be the first time anything's any, been, been faked. But I'm not suggesting that, just to be clear. And I would never make light of anybody, any super, victim who's... Super uh, 
Whoops. Okay. Sorry, guys. We've have reconnected. I don't know what, going on, what, what went on there. I think Richard Branson's hoovering upstairs or something, mate. I don't know. I've got some dodgy internet connection there. Apologies for that. We lost a few peeps there, but do us a favor. Drop the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel then. Hey, we've got a super chat here. Uh, thank you, Jonathan Gallagher, with a two euro super chat, mate. <laughs> he says, you and Mrs. P have super chat arguments, pig. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. There you go, mate. In the public domain. <laughs> what about the Mendy cases, Omar Henri? Well, listen, I'm not going to just talk about all everybody that's, you know, all the, all the fucking, all the, all the, all the, all the I'm not going to, uh, there's, there's a lot of them, but yeah. Okay, anyway. <laughs> right, guys. So uh, I'm going to get on from this topic now, guys. There's 500 legends tuning in. Once again, guys, if you're new, yes, drop the subscribe. We're on here every single day giving you all the latest United news in a no bullshit way. We don't we don't talk about Get in there, you know bullshit transfers, say done deals, no clickbait guff here. It's also it's always uh, you know we there, cover all the latest news and what's going on. So get yourselves involved with the channel if you are new and uh, have your say. Get in there, like these son. two legends who just subscribed soon to K channel. Thank you for subscribing to the channel as well, mate. Get in um, there, my son. and everybody else. Academy of Pips. Appreciate you guys getting in here and subscribing. Nice one. Welcome aboard the Bacon Express. Right. So, okay, Mason Green, we might come, we'll come back onto that at the end, guys, because we're doing QA at the end of the vid. But if you're just joining us, the situation is Manchester United footballer Mason Green has been released on bail after being arrested on suspicion of raping a woman. The 20 year old was arrested on suspicion of assault on Sunday following allegations on social media. Further arrested. Uh, of course, uh, yesterday uh, for making threats to kill, apparently. And also, uh, Manchester United previously said he's not going to be returning to training or matches until further notice. Um, magistrates had granted a second extension for him to, for them to, you know, have a further time to investigate and to question and that kind of thing. But he's now been bailed today, Wednesday, a couple of hours ago, you know, a few hours ago, pending further investigation. So it does pose a lot of questions uh does pose a lot of questions of course but we we'll have to wait and see what's going on and when that information comes out if it's newsworthy information you know and there's more revelations in this story then we will get on and tell you about it um okay so let's just talk about some of the other stuff then that's going on at united today so um yeah i mean there's a report here from the Telegraph to say that Pogba and a lot of the players at Manchester United have been urged to delay, delay their decisions on uh, their futures at the club, basically, until the summer, until there's a new manager that could come in, basically, um, because obviously everything's up in the air right now. Uh, my personal opinion is we shouldn't really be offering Paul Pogba a new contract anyway, because I don't think he's good super, enough for Manchester United based on what we've seen and he wants too much money. Think about Aubameyang and Arsenal. Aubameyang were prepared to let that Get guy there, go on a free and uh, end his contract so he could sign for Barca on a free um, Get just to there, get his 350k son. wages off the books so they can better utilise that elsewhere. Now, I'm not saying Pogba's it's as bad as the situation as that because obviously Obama was, you know, washed his hand Get with there, Arsenal, didn't he? Washed his hands with Arsenal, wasn't really going to play for them ever again. So it was such a bad, untenable position for him, really. So it's not the same as Pogba, but still, Pogba isn't really worth the amount of money that we're paying him. But then again, when you look at what players are available to Manchester United and who we've got to go and get to improve our midfield, you know, Declan Rice, they want £90 million for. Ruben Neves, they want £50 million. So it wouldn't surprise me if Manchester United, you know, the Glazers and Manchester United's board and everybody, they, they decide that it makes sense to sign Paul Pogba up to a new contract on big money. Just because then they don't have to go out there and sign another big player on big, big money. You know, 40 million quid for Ruben or 50 million quid for Ruben in the summer. They don't have to really do that. It's just keep Pogba on a new four-year deal. So um, that might happen. I mean, in regards to Paul Pogba and what he's doing right now, I personally think it's a good going to be a good time for him when he comes back. I am very happy that he's training. And I am very happy that he's, you know, uh, that he's um, getting back to fitness. Here is... Uh, Oh no, that's not that's not Pogba training. Never mind, never mind. But um, <laughs> but yes, Paul Pogba back to training, back to full fitness, pretty much soon, and he, we should see him feature again in games. And because of the situation where he's going to potentially get a new club in the summer on a big money move, he wants a big fat signing on bonus. Mino Riona wants a big fat agent fee and all the rest of it too. He's going to be playing out of his skin, I think. I think you're going to see Paul Pogba at his absolute best between now and the end of the season. Just got a feeling. I could be wrong. Um, but if he does play extremely well between now and then, 
Mm, maybe it does make sense for United to, to, to sign him up to the right deal. But I couldn't pay that guy. You couldn't pay that guy 400k a week or anything, increasing what he's on now. It'd be ridiculous. <clears throat> hey, thank you, Simon Cowie, for the 449 uh, super chat here, my man. Appreciate you getting in here, Simon Cowie, with your super chat. He says, Pig, Johnny Evans was found, was charged and was found innocent because he was at a casino with his teammates when he played for the club. Oh, fair play, yeah, Simon Cowie. Yeah, well, do you know what? I must admit, that's a little bit of a hole in my knowledge about that Johnny Evans case. You know, so previously, I'll be honest, when, when stuff like this happens, you know, like eating the Mendy stuff or whatever, yeah, I, I know about it, I hear about it. I don't delve into it because I just, it's too depressing, isn't it? But because of this whole Mason Greenwood shit, you know, uh, I've sort of had to, you know, look into it further and stuff. But uh, so I'm not too sure about what happened there with Johnny Evans, mate, in regards to charging innocence and all that stuff. But that's what you're telling me, Simon. And uh, yeah, look, innocent until proven guilty, guys. I'm 100% about that life. Anyway, uh, thank you for subscribing, Touch Games, Nostalgic Neil, Ravind Barre, Chad Phillips, and everybody else as well for getting in here. Really appreciate you. Thank you for that, Simon Cowie, your legend. I hope you're doing well. Uh, sorry I missed that super chat for a little bit. So just in regards to Pogba, guys, yeah, I mean, let's have a vote in the live chat. Let's just say summertime comes around, Pogba's contract runs down, new manager comes in. I don't know who it could be, Poch or Ten Hag, or maybe Ragnick stays. Paul Pogba, stay or go? Thank you, Ayub called for subscribing to the channel, mate. Appreciate that. Hi there, Sean O'Sullivan. Let him go, says Kieran Swart. Pog out, Pog out. Go, says Kieran Stewart. Pogba out, he's a leech. Well, this is my opinion on Paul Pogba. You guys who've been watching this channel for years already know my opinion on Paul Pogba. But for anybody who's new, there is 500 odd people in here right now. This is my opinion on Paul Pogba. He's bang averagely shite. <laughs> there you go. He's world class on his day, which is one every three games, maybe one every four games. He's got the best passing ability, he's got the best vision, he's got the best technique, he's a fantastic box-to-box -box player in the terms of he's got everything you need, he's he's physical, he's got the vision, he's got the technique, he's perfect. He's perfect. Perfect Paul Pogba. Guess what, though? He turns up once every, once every now and then. That's it. He feels like doing it once every now and then. I feel like his commitment levels, his effort levels, his motivation levels, are not quite the same as what we need a player to have at Manchester United. I feel like he, his heads go, his head goes sometimes in games. I feel like he, uh, he struggles to get back into the game sometimes if he's not had a perfect start to a game. I feel like he's uh, a confidence player. That's probably the way to put it. He's a confidence player, and when he, when everything's spot on, when Paul Pogba's feeling great, when he's feeling like the team are on it around him, and he's feeling up to the task, and he fancies it. He can turn it on and he can be a quality, quality player. But unfortunately, he's not the type of player that's going to give you a 7 out of 10 performance every single week. He's going to give you a 3 out of 10, then a 4 out of 10, then a 9 out of 10, then a fucking 5 out of 10, then a, then a 6 out of 10, then a 10 out of 10, then a fucking 2 out of 10. You know, he's so inconsistent. Whereas what United really needs is a player who turns up most weeks, i.e., uh, you know, a Carrick or a Fletcher or somebody like that who's reliable, who works well, and who always gives it their all, and who always performs to a good standard. You don't have to be Billy Big Bollocks every single week, but just to a good standard. That is the problem with Paul Pogba, is just the fact that he's inconsistent and because of the amount of money he's on. It's not good value for Man United to, to, to pay that money to him anymore. 300 grand a week, 350k a week, somewhere around that in that region. Crazy. That money could be better spent on, a, on another midfielder that maybe would perform consistently every single week. <clears throat> Viking Red says, Pig, I packed Salah on SBC Review. Bell says he's not a box-to-box -box pig. What do you mean, Bell? Of course, of course he's a box-to-box -box midfielder. What do you mean? I mean, maybe he's not been you. What do you mean? <laughs> of course he's a box-to-box -box midfielder, mate. He can play... He can play... Uh, yeah, you know, he is. <laughs> um, Pogba is hard work in process as Madhouse. What the team needs is an old school leader in midfield, says Robin. I mean, he, 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 he you know, when you define that, um, define that, I mean, if you, if you look at what he's done for Manchester United over the couple of years, he's more or less been sitting in a midfield too. But that's because of the style. But when you're talking about attributes of player, I mean, he has the ranginess, he has the, the, the you know, he's athletic. And he's obviously got the passing and the goal scoring ability to get forward. So to sit and defend, you know, if you're talking about where he's been and to get forward and perform. So from that point of view, you know, he is. <laughs> but I mean, you know, you might think of him as a slightly different, um, what's the word, category. But 
he's definitely a, a good all-round midfielder. You know, you look at his abilities on the ball. You look at his, he could, he's supposed to be a good goal scorer. I haven't really seen it for Manchester United. Saw him banging in a shitload of goals for fucking Juventus, though. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, fair enough. It's a special one. That is true. I mean, Pogba's defending is not the best. I agree with you on that sense. I agree with you on that sense. But where where you look where he's been used over the last couple of years in a holding midfield a lot of the time, you know, his job has been to be, you know, box to box. But I agree with you. He's, his best position is not there because he's not actually a great defender. He's great at everything else. I don't think he's great in the, in the you know, in, 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 in the tackle, actually, you know, compared to some other people. I agree. He's physical, though, and he's strong, and he does get in those midfield battles. But, yeah, you see him losing the chase a little bit there as well, in my opinion, a lot of the time. He's not what you need as a defensive-minded, uh, you know, midfielder, really. He's not what you need as a defensive-minded midfielder. He was sort of shoehorned in there because we've got Bruno Fernandes, obviously. Really, Pogba's best position, you know, is in the CAM role, where he can maybe uh, create chances and score goals, and, you know, he's a bit more advanced. Get he has there, zero boy, attacking yeah. emphasis on him. That's what you need is zero attacking emphasis on him. If he was played in the CAM, there, I think he would flourish, actually, because he's very technically good and he's powerful. He's got the vision. But we've got Bruno Fernandes. And so for the last couple of seasons, he hasn't been playing there. And, uh, you know, but yeah, Pogba's not a great, he's not a great, um, you know, he's not a great CDM, I agree, because of the reason that he's, uh, he's, he's not the most defensive of minor players. Kieran Stewart, Kieran Swart, thank you for subscribing. And Simon Ashton, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. Uh, Templar Priest says, forget how we used him. Look how he uses us as a club. Get rid. Yeah, no, I agree, I agree mate. I mean, we haven't utilized Paul Pogba to the best of his abilities, I don't think, over the years. But at the same time, he hasn't really shown us that he is that top world-class player that's worth £89 million that we paid for. Yeah, well, fair enough, VKD. That's, yeah, exactly. He's nowhere near as defensive as that. I mean, VKD says people look at Pogba's size and think he's Vieira. But he's not. He's more like a Modric playmaker. If you look at his creative numbers, he's as, uh, he's as much as anyone. Yeah, very much so. Very much so in terms of creativity. Forward passes in games. Look, I, like I've said, guys, he has all of the attributes you need to be a top midfielder. All of them. But there's something there. There's something going on there behind the scenes. I don't know. It, does, it doesn't turn up. It doesn't translate onto the pitch often enough. No, I didn't, Simon Cowie. What? Mino Riola's in intensive care and in a bad way. No, I didn't. Is that true? I don't know. I've just put it into Google and then nothing's come up about it. Oh, hang on. I don't know, mate. That's like a week ago. I don't know. I think there's a... I don't know, mate. Mino Riola will leave hospital very soon and begin rehabilitation process, confirms his friendly friend as he claims super agent will respond to all those who have spoken ill of him with this news. All right, okay, well, uh, I'm not going to speak anybody of, uh, ill of anybody who's ill, um, but at the same time, you know, I don't really like Mino Riola. I think he's a bad agent. I think he's a bad agent. I think he saps a lot of the money out of the game. I think he also advises players not necessarily for the best of their careers, but just for the best of their bank balances and his. So there you go. That's my opinion. But I'm not going to, you know, I don't know what's going on. He's in hospital. Well, OK, well, get well soon, Riola. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I don't want anybody. I don't want to wish Ill, Ill upon anybody. So get well soon, Riola. But also, uh, you know, um, you, you know, he's, he's still a shite agent. Yeah, he's unprofessional as fuck. I agree with the special one. All the stuff he said about Manchester United over the years is a, is a disgrace. Um, Abri Magello says, Paul Pogba is always good. Uh, and he's a lot of profit in the game. I mean, when you say he's always good, what do you mean? He's not always good, is he? He's he's one week he's great, next week he's gash. Yeah, nice one, Lowry TV. I agree. He says it's been a breath of fresh air. Pogba not playing. I almost thought we sold him. Sick of this convo for years. He was a world class player. Now just injured and lazy. Berber says when Pogba came in, I think he should have been made captain. He would have flourished in that role. Now he's a poor version of himself at Juve. Pogba captain. You what? <laughs> Fair enough. Um, if we have a good uh, CDM, he, Pogba and Bruno could play. The thing is, though, Azarul Nazim Abdullah, I, I agree. I agree. If we have the right CDM. So, unfortunately, what Man United have been doing the last few seasons is relying on what? Who have we played? It's, well, Matic and Pogba a lot of the time, okay? So, Pogba's... So, Matic is expected to be more of a sitter. 
And you can obviously say Fred or McTominay or whoever's played with Pogba as well. But if we're talking about the 4-2-3-1 that we've played a lot recently, when you've got Pogba in the middle with, say, Matic, Matic is more defensive minded than Pogba's still got defensive duties to do, obviously holding, but he's also got emphasis to get forward, be a bit more box to box, obviously, and uh, and be the creative player in the midfield. We haven't seen it work well most of the time, though, at Manchester United. I think if you had the right player, though, you look at how Pogba performs for France, and a lot of people say, well, France have got Kante. And so for that reason, you know, Pogba's able to get forward a bit more. He's able to create. He's able to have less defensive duties because Kante's such a monster. I guess that's true. If United had a really mobile, really top quality, really physical beastly CDM to sit next to Pogba, then the defensive duties are going to be less so on Paul Pogba. And that's only going to mean that he's going to be able to create more. And he probably won't, um, you know, won't have, have to get involved so much in the defensive duties, which he doesn't like anyway. We got over 200 likes on the stream. Get in there. Thank you everyone for dropping the thumbs up button. Appreciate you all. Do get the likes on the video if you haven't done. Do smash that subscribe button if new to the channel. Thank you, Mauer, for subscribing to the channel. Uh, there's only two captains in that team and it's CR7 or De Gea. Good shout. Good shout. I like uh, CR7 personally, but De Gea is probably the most deserving, but because he's a goalkeeper, I'm not too keen on it so then guys this is it so as i say james ducker from the telegraph reporting that pogba and co are urged to delay decisions on future until new managers been named other contracts are on hold as well there's a lot of players contracts up in the air at this moment in time bruno fernandez being another one um and then of course jesse lingard might be offered a new contract between now and the end of the season i still expect him to go to west ham or go to you know uh, newcastle united in the summer for a big money move but United might put that big money offer on the table depending on how good he is between now and the end of the season. Think about the Glazernomics. Think about our owners. Think about our board and how they think about things. Well, they're probably quite aware that Jesse Lingard's a decent player who they've already got here that they could sign up for, what, a few million signing on bonus and a decent wages. But then they don't have to go out there in the summer transfer window and sign another player for 15 or 20 million pounds. So from a financial point of view... For them, it might make sense, but it's just whether or not Jesse is desperate to get away from United. If what we heard is true and he really wants to go and he wants to go to West Ham, he wants to go to Newcastle, wants to play because he's not getting game time at United, then that will be his major you know, motivating factor. But if it's not, like if, if he plays well between now and the end of the season, if he gets game time from Ragnick and he's made assurances, he might sign up a new contract. I don't want him to sign a new contract, I'm just saying, but I, I am glad that he stayed in the January transfer window because of what happened with Greenwood. And of course the players we loaned out in the wide areas. So it makes sense to have Mace, uh, sorry to have Jesse um, in the in the team between now and the end of the year. When's the next game live, says Brew Cooper? It's Friday night, mate. We'll be doing a watch along for it Friday night. We'll also have fan cams after the game. Friday night, Friday the 4th, uh, against Middlesbrough in the FA Cup. Uh, Old Trafford, mate. Fourth round of the FA Cup. Come on, United. We've got to fucking win something this year, don't we? That's our biggest chance of winning silverware. <clears throat> yeah, the board is shocking, mate. You think the Nakanu players coming in because of Joel and uh, uh, Abraham? Um, yeah, it means we... Avram, you mean, yeah? <laughs> Sorry, Abraham, he said. Uh, means we will keep Lingard. Yeah, maybe so. I could, I could see a scenario where Paul Pogba's offered a new contract by United. I really, really can. Uh, right, guys, I want to get on to the, the next bit of uh, information here. Uh, I'll just show you this, actually, quickly before I do. But uh, this is just... It's just the top 10 January transfer windows there. Newcastle spent 100 million euros. Juventus 95, Barcelona 55, Liverpool 45, Everton 35, Tottenham 33, Aston Villa 30, Fiorentina 28, Zenit 27, Watford 24. Man United on that list, are we? No, because we spent zero. And we also got four players away on loan and, uh, and, uh, and the Mason stuff too. So uh, really shit, <laughs> really shit. What a shit window. Zero pounds. That's what we spent. Zero pounds. Zip zero. Yep. Okay. So, uh, but before before I... Hang on, wait. Rashmano just sent me something through here. What's this, bud? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to start talking about that now. Great timing, Rashmano. Thank you for this, bud. So, um, yeah, I want to get onto the Pochettino stuff. So, uh, reports come out. Former United Chief Ed Woodward was a big fan of Pochettino. And it's understood his successor, Richard Arnold is keen on appointing the Argentine to replace interim boss Ralph Rangnick. This is uh, this is some of the reports that are coming out. And um, obviously yesterday we heard that maybe uh, Pochettino's been told that he can have his sort of marching papers at the end of the year. Now we saw PSG get knocked out of the French Cup in the quarterfinals the other day to OG Nice. 
of a bunch of farmers in a farmers league um, getting knocked out in the French Cup. <laughs> It's funny, isn't it? Anyway, uh, Dante scoring a cheeky little Penenka penalty, knocking about 6-5 on pens. Get in there, my son. Uh, PSG struggling, even though they've got fucking Lionel Messi and Neymar and Mbappe and all these dons. <laughs> I don't want Pochettino, guys. But he is, a, reportedly, there were reports that came out yesterday that it's expected that he's been told that he can leave at the end of the season, basically. That they don't kind of want to keep him after this time, after this season. So Pochettino... Shit in the bed over there in France. Um, you know, they, they, I'm going to have a quick look at the League One table. I expect them to be comfortably at the top. I haven't been following it at all. I know, you know, Messi's not been doing well at all. And, you know, they are comfortably top of the league, guys. They're, they're nine points top of the league. So they should be. Go and send me over there um, with Messi, like in Neymar and Mbappe and all the team that they've got and the b billions that they've got behind them. I'll win you the fucking League Two in that Farmers League, son. I'm almost sure of it. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, it doesn't impress me much doing that. But he's got dumped out the cup. The thing is with Poch is he's not a proven winner. He's not a proven, tr you know, man who gets trophies. He's a good team builder. That's about it. You know, he's built a good team at Southampton, built a good team at Spurs. Ultimately, never won anything. Not proven to be the, the manager to take this club to the next level. So why the hell when Man United want to take a punt on someone who's just okay? It's, it's, it's not the right fit for United. Again, we need somebody who's a proper proven manager who's won some stuff in my opinion and you know but let me ask you guys pochettino in or pochettino out <laughs> let me know what you guys say ten hagen does in says robin nice one and uh, apparently you know united are increasingly uh, increasingly confident of uh, of appointing pochettino in the summer should that happen um, so news coming out of France this morning said that Mauricio Pochettino has told those around him he will leave PSG in the summer while the club has been looking for ways to replace the coach mid-season. So uh, really, I don't, if, we, if we're hearing what we're hearing over there, the, then the PSG hierarchy not overly enamoured with uh, Pochettino, guys. Ten Hag says Primo, out says Madhouse, yeah, in, out says Doberlord, says in, out says Sugar. I mean, he's a good coach. I'm not, let's not discredit him. He is a good coach. This Tottenham side played decent stuff. He built a nice team there, good players, etc. Um, but there's a difference from being a good coach to being a great coach. And United need a great coach, somebody that can go on and take us to the next level, win those trophies. Um, but this is information that's come out as well from Foot Mercato. It says, if PSG sought to replace him in recent weeks, Pochettino was ready to leave in January with MUFC in sight. That's a uh, report this morning. You know, who knows the legitimacy, legitimacy of that? Also, another report coming out from France to say that, uh, you know, um, Zidane at PSG is also a possibility for the summer or maybe even sooner. Depends on what how Pochettino does between now and the end of season as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, Champions League games coming up soon mm, you know so so Zidane has been heavily linked to PSG in the past he's perhaps their next manager but it just depends on how long Pochettino is going to be there Poch too big for Arsenal says VK Dean <laughs> he is yeah <laughs> Ten Hag says Joseph uh yeah Scouser on the Wirral he did just get knocked out of the French Cup I know by OG Nice in the quarterfinals mate <laughs> that is shoddy I'm sorry to say, but when you are PSG, man, you can't be losing to OG Nice. OG Nice have got fucking Morgan Schneider in the midfield and 36-year-old Dante at the back, mate, scoring Penenkas in the penalty shootout line. So um, there's no excuse for PSG with all their quality players that they've got. We, we looked, when, when it happened the other day, we looked at the, uh, the team lineups and the team lineups were like, wow, okay, PSG, whichever team they put out from their squad, it's a fucking great team and they should win. And so the fact is, yeah, the fact they didn't do that, it's 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 a bottle job. Dante showing messy levels, says Wiggy. <laughs> Piggy, you could get Rafa fact. Oh, I don't I wouldn't want Rafa, mate. Rafa Benitez, no thanks. Sorry to say, we don't want we don't need the Spanish waiter here, my son. I'm not ordering a fucking a glass of red wine here, lad. I don't we don't need Rafa Benitez at the club. And also he's a Liverpool scummer. <laughs> he's a Liverpool scummer, mate. We don't have Liverpool scummers at the club. I mean, he is a proven manager and stuff. I don't know. I'm, I, listen, I'm in, I'm in a bit of a strange camp with Rafa Benitez because even though he won the Champions League with Liverpool and even though he won, uh, but yeah, he won La Liga with Valencia, didn't he? Which in itself, when you actually think about that, that's pretty impressive. Um, but even though he's done those things, he's done some other things as well. I, I never really rated him. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. going to be honest, I never really rated him that much, mate. Fergie always slapped him up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs>
Anyway, Jonathan Gallagher, thank you for the two euro super chat, boss. Really appreciate that. He says, new manager will get sacked. Uh, let's no be surprised, says Jonathan Gallagher. Well, eventually everyone's going to get sacked, I suppose. Thank you, Pearl691 Pro. He says, let's get to 300 likes. Come on, let's be having you. Thank you very much, Pearl. Yeah, please do drop a thumbs up. You're just joining. Um, so, so Jonathan Gallagher, mate, just to go back to that. What you said is the new manager, it won't take long for them to get sacked, right? Mm, that's the problem. It does, does, does seem like a bit of a revolving door at Manchester United right now. Benitez is a good manager. I know, I know everybody else says that too. And he, his, his, his achievements speak for themselves. But, you know, it's Fergie slapped him up, mate. <laughs> uh, we've got a transfer update. Thank you, Rushmana, for getting in here. Transfer update. Um, okay, so uh, Eric Ten Hag's named under consideration for permanent manager's role at United. Mm. But Pochettino, at this moment in time, with 18 months left on his PSG contract, is favoured at this moment in time, is understood. Um, also, just a little bit more on Donny van der Beek about Lampard personally phoning uh, the, the Everton new loanee to convince him of the Goodison move. So he probably gave him some certain assurances there. And when Donny did sign, he did obviously talk about Lampard's, uh, you know, um, influence there. Also, uh, also Nicola Zanolio. Not heard of this guy before, but apparently, uh, oh, that page is gone. <laughs> that page is gone, actually. But apparently we're linked with another player, I think. That page is gone. Uh, all right. Uh, also, what else is this? Manchester United are increasingly confident of appointing Pochettino. Yes, absolutely. Also, there's some information that came out about um, Trabzonspor, the Turkish side, being linked to sign Phil Jones until the end of the season. Um, so, you know, uh, we'll have to wait and see what goes on there. But uh, I don't know. I mean, Phil Jones doesn't seem to want to go anywhere. There were reports that, um, who was it? Um, Bordeaux were interested in taking him on loan in January, but he turned them down. So I don't think he really wants to go anywhere. I think he's kind of happy at Manchester United. Uh, there you go. Uh, right, okay. Just a couple of other things to get into. Then I'm going to get into the live chat for a Q&A here, peeps. Um, yeah. So uh, Rob Dawson from ESPN reporting that Anthony Martial and Donny van der Beek have both been asked by John Murtaugh to wait until a new manager is appointed before deciding to whether or not to play next season. And so with Paul Pogba as well. So, you know, players at this moment in time Get just being there, told to God. just hang out until the summer till we know more. Get in there, my son. Okay, Jonathan Gallagher with another two euro super chat. Thank you, Jonathan. He says, no matter the manager, he will get sacked. No hope, says Jonathan Gallagher. I mean, if you look at the law of averages, Jonathan Gallagher, yeah, he probably will get sacked. Even if it's after 10 years. I mean, there's not many people who go out on their own terms who retire like, say, Sir Alex Ferguson did. Often it ends in tears with a manager at a football club and they get sacked. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. You're right, Jonathan. <laughs> Thank you, Abdullahi, for subscribing to the channel. Exclusive says Phil Jones seemed to be doing well when he plays. Better than Slab Guire. Well, yeah, he's only played once, to be honest. He's only played once since coming back into it. But he did play better than Slab Guire. I would rather... I, I don't mind keeping him as a backup. Um... But also, it'd be nice to go and see him actually play week to week somewhere and just see if he can get that career back and be a great player. He's only 29. You know, he has played for England like 30, 40 times or whatever it is. He could get that career back. Harley, thank you for subscribing, Harley. Nice one. Shamir Qureshi says, Poch is very good with man management. Can be a father figure, etc. Good tactically, but he has a reputation as a bottler. <laughs> Shamir, so true, mate. And you're right. He is a good coach. He seems like a nice guy. You know, he is a good man manager, as you say development of players, you know, people like Harry Kane, Sun Kyung Min, Dele Ali. you know, when, when obviously he's developing them at the start of his career, not now because he's shy, but, you know, might re revitalise himself, but, you know, <laughs> stuff like that, he developed those players very well. Can't argue with that. And so I agree. And also, even if you go back before that, he impressed me a lot when he was at Southampton, you know, just for the time he was at Southampton with that squad that he built there. Uh, was it was it the Graziano Pella days or was that somebody else? <laughs> I don't know, but there was a good squad there, mate, with Schneidlin in and stuff like that as well. And um, yeah, he did a good, he built a good, decent team there. Greenwood at McDonald's. Oh, Brew Cooper. Well, we we'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens. With, uh, um, I read that one out too quick. <laughs> Crikey, I'm scouser on the wheel. Can't wait for the new footy player TV special. Twenty four hours in police custody. Oh, no, I've done it again. <laughs> Thank you, Berber, for putting a link to the channel membership in there, broski. There it is if you want it, guys. Nice one. Um, they wouldn't buy LVG Mane and Virgil van Dijk. <laughs> How different it could all have been. 
Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, that's true. Exactly, if we'd have got those... Yeah, I remember that, actually, the Virgil van Dijk thing, man. Uh, we did miss out on him big time. A lot of people subbing, says Robin. Yeah, guys, thank you very much for hitting that subscribe button. If you are new, drop the subscribe. We're a no-nonsense no nonsense Man United fan channel. We cover all the latest news in a no-bullshit way. And we're all about the community vibe on this channel, too. As you can see, we get everybody involved in the chat. Um, we, we have a debate. We have a community vibe. And we... Uh, we hear everybody's thoughts and opinions on lots of different matters to do with Manchester United. That's what we do. So if you're enjoying the show, then by all means, smash that subscribe. Click that little bell icon so you get a notification when we post. And drop the thumbs up on the video if you're new to the channel as well. That will help us boost us up there. we got 245 likes. Thanks, everyone, for hitting the like. Um, do I think Mike Clegg says, Piggy, do you think United can keep the score down when we meet at Anfield on the 19th of March? I mean, what what I would say is obviously we got we got penetrated last time when we played Liverpool, but the thing is, is that anything can happen on any given derby like that. Even if Manchester United were tenth in the table and Liverpool were clear, ten ten points ahead at the top, smashing it, haven't lost a game all season. Like Man United could still turn up on the day and win. So it's unlikely, obviously, that the bookies would favour Liverpool to smash United up. I'm sure they would. But, hey, look, we don't know where, where we will be in a month, month or so's time when we've got that game. We might be in a good run of form. We might be playing well. And also, it's a Liverpool versus United game. Like, in a way, form does go out the window a bit. Now, I'm not saying that we're the best United side ever, but I still think we've got a chance to smash up the Scousers. Why the fuck not? Come on! Longstaff went from Mans Mansfield, says Summit Benza. Um, Simon says we need to get Poch back because he will rebuild the club and get us playing then over the next four years with using our academy and bringing what we need and that will build up confidence, passion, hunger he's a good signing for the Glazers to not spend a lot of money mate that's what I would say, look at what he did at Spurs he's proven to not have to spend a lot of money in order to get good results so um, I think from that point of view they'd love him he's another yes man as well I see what you're saying Cat Simon, he, he's a good coach we could do a lot worse than Pochettino but I also think we could do a lot better. That's just my point. I think we could do a heck of a lot better. We shouldn't settle on Pochettino. Um, also, reports came out um, that uh, maybe Usman Dembele has reached an agreement to uh, to, to the, in the summer with an unnamed club. So, uh, but we'll have to wait and see about that. You know, he's been linked to bloody everybody. Uh, all right then, guys. So I think, has that got any more news here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rob Dawson from ESPN reporting that Mauricio Pochettino and Eric Ten Hag are on a five-man shortlist for the Man United job. Interim boss Ralph Randnick is also not ruling out the possibility he could stay on in the role for another year. So, guys, who would you like to see Manchester United's manager at the start of the 2022-23 season? Who would you like to see as United's manager then? Ralph Randnick at the wheel still? Uh, maybe... Luis Enrique, maybe uh, Poch, Eric Ten Hag. I don't know. I mean, who? Zidane? Super, who would you actually like to chat. see as our uh, manager? Ten Hag, says uh, Merchant. Ralph Mourinho. Ragnick, Ten Hag. Ten Hag and Edwin, says VK Dean. That would be really good, actually. Ten Hag, Ten Hag. Jose Mourinho, says Robin. Ten Hag, Ten Bag. Ten Hag. Well, most people saying Ten Hag, I think actually he's the best. He's the best one we could go for of who's available right now too. Only because of how stylistically he plays, um, the Dutch total football style, attacking style, very impressive in the Champions League against good opposition from that Ajax team, very impressive. Uh, if Salah plays, I just think he tears up the current United defense. Just not good enough, really. Fair point. I mean, fair point. <laughs> it's a fair point. But hey, you never know how if we all turn up on the day. You just never know. But yeah, they've got insane. Players, obviously, Salah was so hard to stop in the last game. And you know what? The United defence made it so easy for him as well. Like, yeah, he finished a couple of good ones and all that. But, man, United made it easy for him. Um, anyway, so so there you go. Poch and Ten Hag are on a five-man shortlist. We'll have to wait and see what goes on. Looks like most of you guys want to have uh, Ten Hag. Hey, we've got a five-euro super chat from Jonathan Gallagher. Sue! Guys, can we get a sue in the live chat there for Jonathan? Thank you, my man. He says, we'll be 10 years till EE -E compete again. Sorry, oh, we compete again in the league. Again, Pig. Massive rebuild. Same problems here. We will sack countless managers, Pig, mate. Ten years. Ten years, Jonathan Gallagher. I mean, hey, look. <laughs> that seems a little bit pessimistic. I mean, not going to lie. Ten years. Fuck, you know, we finished second last year. Okay. I see what you're saying. Look. Ten years. You don't need ten years, bro. You don't need ten years. Three years at most. Come on. I could, I could see us challenging next season if we sign the right players in the summer. You know, we're not that far away for Pete's sake. 
we have got some great quality world class players in the side, whether it's Ronaldo or Bruno or Varane or De Gea, whoever. We have got a good basis. It's just we need the right manager to come in, I think. Maybe Ragnik will be that guy, but so far it's early days. Um, but we need the right manager. We need the right signings. We need the right investment from the board, the owners. And we just need to, you know, to actually make a full on go of it. That's what we need to do. Unfortunately, we can't do what we've done in this January window and just show no ambition. If we want to win stuff, if we want to challenge for the league, then we have to spend money. We'll find out in the summer how much ambition the Glazers have to challenge for the next season. Maybe they've just written this season off. I don't know. But we'll see how much money they've got uh, to spend for United this summer. Because if they spend a lot, then maybe we could have a really good team by the end of the summer transfer window. If they don't spend a lot, we could end up with still a mediocre shite side with McTominay and Fred in the middle. So it depends on their ambitions. My personal opinion is that they won't have that much ambition in the summer because, well, they don't give a toss about Manchester United, do they? If they if they did give a toss, they'd have spent money in Jan. And also there's a quote from fucking Tom Brady here, by the way, um, that says, this is him retiring. He sent a message to the Glazer family. Get ready, for, get your vomit bags at the ready, peeps. Get your vomit bags at the ready. Tom Brady, Tom Brady with his seven Super Bowl rings, mate, says this. To the Glazer family, thank you for taking a chance on me and supporting me. I know I was demanding at times, but you provided everything we needed to win. And your ownership was everything a player could ask for. Fuck off, Tom Brady. You know what I mean? No. Well, maybe they have done that over there with their team over there in the NFL. Maybe they have done, eh? But they fucking haven't bothered with Manchester United the same way. Nowhere near. There's not one Manchester United player that can say the same about the Glazers' ownership at this football club. You know, Gary Neville, six months ago, is fucking going on Sky Sports, talking about how much of a disgrace it was, like European Super League business and all that sort of stuff. Man, there's not one player in this current setup that when they retired and they were no longer contractually fucking signed up to the club, I don't think that would, would praise the Glazers for their ownership or providing the team with absolutely everything they needed to win. Madhouse says the man's on drugs. Yeah, I know. Exclusive. It does sound like say the lines, Tom. <laughs> I know. Going through the motions there. Can't wait for Ronaldo's interview when he leaves you. It says Perba. Such respect for the owners. It's a pity some don't take notice. They spend a billion on Man U. Dark by design. I mean, uh, maybe, maybe they've actually given them what they've wanted there. They signed the right players. They got Tom Brady, obviously, won them a Super Bowl, right? So, you know, they've obviously done the right things there, but they have not managed this club well. They might have spent money here on signings and transfers, but they haven't spent it well. They haven't managed everything well behind the scene. They haven't got the right men in. They've got financial men in in terms of the board and etc. The man's on drugs. Uh, <laughs> you still have spirit, zero, zero faith in the Glazers, says Shrin Shrinidi. You still have zero faith. New CEO is a friend of Woodward. NFL is different and football is completely different. Totally agree with you, mate. Totally agree with you. Tom Brady praising the Glazers, though, absolutely sickens me. But there you go. Yeah, guys, so that's basically the latest New United news. You know, Greenwood's been arrested on bail uh, with talks of uh, United players being urged to, to wait to the summer to sign new contracts at the club, potentially, if there's a new coach and all the rest of it. Thank you once again for getting in. Uh, let's get into the live chat then, guys, for, for a little while before we wrap this video up. Uh, thank you once again, everybody, for being in the stream. Still 400 of you legends in for the news. We do these uh, daily roundup shows, usually in the afternoon time and in the evening as well, in regards to Man United news. So if you want to get your fix, make sure you get yourself involved with the channel by subscribing. And drop a thumbs up on this video too. Right, let's get into the chat. Hey, Kate Cadet, sorry I missed it. And oh, Kate Cadet has been a member of this channel for 17 months. Thank you very much, Cake Cadet, for supporting this channel for nearly two years, bud. Guys, can we get your favorite Baker Brigade emoji in there to celebrate Cake Cadet? Sausage Soldier membership here. What a don. He says, no Greenwood, no Cavani, get no Martial, nice. and I can't see Ronaldo sticking around next season. Never mind the midfield. We will have a striker crisis to sort out in the summer. Nice comment there. Thank you, Cake Cadet. Yeah, well, okay. Well, if Ronaldo does go, if he's not happy about, if we do finish fifth or sixth, but he's not happy, he goes and Cavani goes, and Greenwood goes, let's be honest, then, you know, we are screwed. <laughs> in the striker department, I couldn't agree more. We're going to have to go out there in the summer and buy a proper striker. Who could that be? Well, probably what we'll do, in my opinion, is not buy anybody. Probably what we'll do is just go with uh, 
we'll probably just keep Ronaldo and we'll probably just sign Cavani up to another contract, another year's contract, I reckon. And then we'll probably, um, you know, and promote the likes of uh, Elanga or, you know, maybe give them some opportunities up there. But I don't know, mate. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, interesting comment, mate. I mean, yeah. We have a crisis in the striker position. Dybala says Primot. Who would you guys like to see then? Let's have a quick vote. Bring back Martial says PS. Uh, who would you like to see? Cavani will not stay since Tactics Gaming. How do you know though? I would have thought that would be the case too. I expect him to leave in the summer. But how do we know? We don't know. Man United might go, oh shit, we can't actually sign a good striker. Let's just give Cavani what he wants and, and pay him to stay another year. Charlie McNeil says John Layton. Fuck, now we have to get Haaland says Bell. Yep, yep. Berber says brave weight from Barcelona for 120 million knowing our luck. <laughs> Scouser on the Wirral. Thank you, Scouser on the Wirral. That means a lot, man. Thank you very much. Yeah, everybody's welcome here, mate. As long as you're, you know, not a complete tool bag, then we welcome rival fans or anybody in here, you know. Scouser on the Wirral says, Look, mate, I'm a Liverpool fan, but I've subbed. I love, love, love fan TV channels. The real folk are on them, plus top banter, mate. Thank you so much, Scouser on the Wirral, pal. Really appreciate you getting in here, la. Hey, no, nice one, Scouser on the Wirral. <laughs> Thanks for subscribing. That's that's awesome of you, mate. Rashford could play as an uh, as a forward. Well, yeah, Rashford could play up top. Lewandowski would be an awesome sign in Madhouse. Man, imagine if we pulled off that. I don't see that happening, though. Why would you sign for Man United when you're, you know, at Bayern, win, potentially going to win things at the moment? Man United are a little bit str troubled. Who knows at this stage, says Jonathan Gallagher. Tom Brady over Maguire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd stick Tom Brady in there at centre back, mate. At least he can distribute. Uh, Alejandro, do you believe that Greenwood's not completely off the hook? I, I, I don't think Greenwood is completely off the hook, mate. I mean, who knows? He, all we know right now is he's been released on bail pending further investigation. There's still an investigation going on. He's not been released on bail. He's not been released, and he, you know that's it, it. No, he's released on bail, but it's still investigation pending. Thank you, Rushmano. Yes, mate. Get in there. Nobody will want to touch us football reasons. It'll be because of money, sadly, says Berber. Top four is massive for United this season. If Rangnick can get top four, then it does increase the likelihood that we can get players who want to play for us and who want that Champions League football as well. If we don't, then yeah, those those type of players would only be coming up for us for money, I think, as well. Richarlison says Ivan Smith. Yeah, well, Rashford will be busy feeding kids this season. Well, I'm pleased for him to do that, to be fair, mate. I'd rather he was out there doing good, positive stuff in the country. Um, and I don't personally think that affects his football life. I'm going to be honest. I just don't. Dan, uh, Dan Davies says, Harnan won't come here, Madrid. I think, I agree, Dan. Why would he? I think the most two likely destinations are Real, where he's supposed to want to go. And also, um, also of course, Manchester City. I think that's realistic. They want a new Aguero, don't they? And they've got the money. Uh, they might be able to convince him. You know, they've got the settled manager and the good team. Benzema for me. Oh, okay, son. Son, yeah, fair play. But Benzema's a bit of a dodgy bastard, mate. You know, in all fairness, didn't he? Didn't he get... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't he get found guilty of, uh, like, blackmailing uh, Valbuena for uh, over a sex table? I don't know about that, mate. <laughs> do we really need to add any more fucking dodgy bastards to the... To the I, don't, I don't think we do, mate. <laughs> anyway... He's a great player, though. <laughs> uh, Daniel Foss says, United need to finish top four and better to draw quality. It's all about that now. Totally agree. Top four, surely, says 217 at cash. Well, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, where do you guys think we'll finish? I think we're probably going to finish fifth now. I'm going to be honest. I think if the starting 11 stays fit, we've got a really good team. You know, you can still play a really good squad with Ragnick's formation, that that four two 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 or whatever. You know, you can still have Cavani and Ronaldo. You can still have Sancho and Bruno. You can still have Rashford involved. You can still have... Um, I guess Fred and McTominay, you know, but Pogba coming back into it as well. And the back line's decent. So, you know, if everybody stays fit, we've still got a good team. Still got a good start in 11. But the problem is our depth now is nowhere near as strong as it was just a month ago. We've got, especially in the wide areas, we are struggling for depth. It'll be tough, says Daniel. Sixth, says Dan Davies. Seventh, says John Layton. Let's wait till he has his day in court. I absolutely agree there, Charlie Anthony. Innocent until proven guilty. He says, anyway, let's sign Kinnan Mbappe. That's the one for me. If we could get any strike, any forward player, yeah, I would get Kinnan Mbappe, mate, because he's versatile and he's just the, he's a prodigy. He's the next star in the world football. Yes, mate. Definitely, but we won't ever be able to sign that guy. Crikey, Fergie 99. <laughs> 
Almost on FFP now. How much can you spend? Says Dark Bride for Zine. I don't know. The penis formation yet. That German penis formation. Hello there, Pogo Gamer. Welcome in. How are you going there, son? And also, Yayo for Nasal. Anyone else agree that Jesse got very lucky? Greenwood got in trouble. Um, well, I wouldn't say see it like that. But from his point of view, yeah, I mean, lucky or unlucky, because he was going to be allowed to leave to go to Newcastle, wasn't he? Um, now he's got to stay and play backup. So maybe lucky or unlucky. It depends on how you look at it. There's some uh, some reports saying that Jesse's not really happy at all that he's had to stay. In fact, uh, let me just read this. Oh, I've lost it. Don't worry. Um, Sonic Quantum. Hey, man, do you think we can win the FA Cup or the Champions League this season? Keep in mind the trouble is still technically and mathematically possible. <laughs> well, we definitely can't win the league. The Champions League is very unlikely because there's just better teams left in it. But stranger things have happened. You never know. We could do it. I'd say I'd give us a 10% chance of winning the Champions League, to be honest. And then going into the uh, the FA Cup, yeah, we've probably got a 30% chance of winning that one because there's, you know, there's a few lesser teams in there. Manchester United are already in the fourth round. If we win that in the fifth round, through the latter stages, only a few games to lift the trophy then. And yeah, we could do that on our day. We could knock anybody out. So yeah, I think, yeah, 30% chance of winning the FA Cup, 10% chance of winning the Champions League and a 0% chance of winning the Prem. <clears throat> just a G indeed line tactics game and we get fifth Ralph Reddick says Man United are considering flying Pig United for the next manager they could do worse Ralph yeah I know uh, Dark Design says Rafe Rovers just signed a sex offender he will be okay yes they actually signed a convicted rapist literally they literally Rafe Rovers signed a convicted rapist and they released a statement afterwards as well sticking by the decision and saying that uh you know, he was at the club previously on loan years ago. We consider him part of the family and we're going to stick by him. And also, you know, we've signed him on football reasons, not for any personal reasons or anything like that. And that's why they've signed him. But, you know, from a family point of view, from a family club point of view, it's terrible. I don't think United could do that. Eight likes away from 300. Get in there, my son. Thank you, Daniel Farr. Mike Clegg says maybe if he had the penis formation shorter and more compact, they could penetrate. Oh, Mike Clegg. I mean, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why is it always Manx's 40-year-old Virgil? I mean, it ain't, mate. What are, you, what, are you, what are you referring to, anyway? Are you telling me there's never been a Scouse sex offender? <laughs> you need to you need to go and have a look at some of the uh, history of, uh, of that. <laughs> anyway. uh, 11 Ken, hey, how's it going there, lad? Thank you, Night Whispers. Let's hit the likes, folks. It's just a Jesus Greenwood to Rafe Rovers. Ah, will Jaden Sancho come closer to fulfilling his potential with Greenwood out? Now's the time to step up, Jaden. I think so, but he's had a poor time of it so far. He's not really got going. Scouser on the wheel says third place is up for grabs. Chelsea are looking dodgy and don't think games in hand do Tottenham well. That's a fair point as well. The, the only concern with United is, right, if we'd have been a bit more successful over the last few games, the period of time that we had, you know, teams like who is it? Uh, Villa and um, Wolves and some of these bad results we've had recently. If we'd have done better in those, I would feel a little bit more optimistic about it. But actually, United's tough run starts in March and uh, we've got a very tough run in towards the end of the season. So we'd have to perform really well in all of the games against big teams, which I'm not convinced we'll do based on that game we played against City and Liverpool. You know, but in, in March, you have to have a look at this. So in March, we've got Atletico Madrid, but before that, we've got City, Tottenham in the league, uh, Liverpool in the league on the 20th of March, then Leicester on the 2nd of April, then Everton, Norwich, Arsenal, Brentford, Brighton, Chelsea, and Palace. That's our running, guys. We've got Leeds as well. So uh, Leeds, City, Spurs, Leicester, Everton, you know, Arsenal, Chelsea, all those teams, Liverpool, all those teams still to play in the running at the end of the season and for that reason I, I'm, I'm not confident of getting top four anymore it's a horrible running we needed to win all the games after that horrible running we had at the start of the season when now we have a good run we needed to win all these games and then we might realistically have done it I could just see us dropping quite a few points at the end of the season as well against teams like you know the Scousers or or, or City even Leicester Chelsea there's a lot of good teams still left to play at the end so that's my only concern we'll lose to Atletico says Big God Bob uh, we'll smash them up, mate. <laughs> We're going to smash them up. Hey, baby, we did it. 300 likes on the live chat, baby. Break out the red panties. It's 300 likes. Uh, the live chats did it, baby. Right, nice one. Thank you, everyone, for hitting the thumbs up. Um, I guess we're going to pretty much wrap this one up in a minute. I'll stick around for a couple more minutes. There's still a lot of comments coming through. Kobe says, I don't want Poch at all. 
I want anybody but Potch, in my opinion. <laughs> Fair enough. I don't like him either. Uh, I think we could do better. 300, get in there, cake cadet. I know we played shite, but we've only lost once. There's no toes. Hashtag glazes out. AK, yes, indeed. Pacer with those bacon emojis. You'd like to thank Pig's Mammy for having him, along with all the cogs that have gotten us here. Hey, thank you, Bell. I appreciate that, man. Yes, indeed. Shout out to Mama Pig. My dream would be Sancho to spark to life like his Dortmund days. Pogba telling his agent, fuck off, I'm staying at United. United sign a pre-contract from Kessie and Poch becoming our manager on a prem. On a, oh, fair enough, on a perm. Oh, fair enough then, Pogo Gamer. That's pretty interesting. Not so sure about the Poch thing, but... <laughs> Can't believe we got rid of Donny. Strange one, isn't it? If we're not going to sign somebody else in midfield, strange one. Just weakened ourselves. The penis formation will penetrate Simeone Raw, says No Toes. <laughs> Can we do it on a cold Friday night versus Borough? We're going to find out, aren't we? Uh, Glazers out, says Rushmano. How about Eric Fivehag? <laughs> Wait, we will crush that there. Come Madrid, take that. Come on, 217. Let's do it. Have a great evening, Super, Pig. Thank you, Tactics. Super Thank you, Robin. Chat. Wahab Hafiz as well. Says Ten Hag gives me the Van Gaal vibes. <laughs> so Potch for me. Sherwin says, if Potch can't do it in France for the best team in the league, how is he expected to do it for us? Spot on. He can't get a team of superstars winning a Farmers Cup, mate. So I agree, Sherwin. Charlie Anthony, thank you for the £1 super chat there. I appreciate you, my man. Get in there. Simon says, if we play 4-3-3 holding line up De Gea, Wan-Bissaka, Varane, Maguire, Tellez, McTominay, Fernandez, Pogba. Yeah, I like that. 4-3-3. Yeah, I like it, mate. I do. That sounds nice. As long as we didn't get any injuries in those wide areas, we should be all right. I don't think he's going to start playing that, though, but I hope he does. I'd love to see it. I think we got the team to play a 4-3-3. Or we did have. Poch isn't built for this club. We needed Conte. Mm, I know. I didn't really want Conte at the time, but he's doing quite well at Spurs. Uh, I, I, I still don't think he was the right fit for Man United either, but definitely wasn't the right fit for the Glazers because all the Glazers want is a yes man, and that's exactly what Pochettino is. 4 3 3 is the way to go. Uh, Mark Ashton says, Is it go on, Piggy? Serious question coming out of you. Do you think Greenwood is angry because he caught on tape or disappointed in himself? I mean, I guess he's feeling a lot of things right now. I would say he's, uh, he's. Uh, if it was, if listen, if it was, if you're a footballer 20 years old, you've got the world at your feet. And then this happens. I would say that he's fucking devastated on every point of view. At least he should be. If he's got anything about him, you know what I mean? Which, you know, we'll have to wait and see if he does. But, uh, I don't know, mate. I don't know, really. I can't really answer that question. I don't know what, what his thinking is. I mean, I, you know, from that recording, what we've seen, what sort of mentality recording is that? I mean, I can't, I can't relate. Let's be fair. A team of superstars is usually a team of laser ego headed snakes. Um, imagine the scenes if Roy Keane got the job. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, so imagine the scenes if Roy Keane got the job. I'd be throwing punches at them. I'm off for a shit. Hey, have a good one, Notos. We're wrapping this one up anyway. Musty for the win says, What the fuck is wrong with your grammar? Who are you talking to, Musty? And do you know what the ironic thing is? You've spelt grammar wrong, you absolute tit. <laughs> What the fuck's wrong with your spelling, twat? <laughs> Grammar's got an AR at the end, not an ER, you melt. <laughs> That's a good one. Anyway, uh... <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Palmarius says legend. Thank you, Palmarius, you Don. And Primot, you Don as well. Guys. <laughs> That's hilarious, isn't it? You need to work on your grammar. Yeah, you need to work on your fucking spelling, mate. <laughs> Right. Anyway, we're gonna uh, we're gonna we're gonna leave this one there. We're gonna leave this one there. Thank you, everyone, for uh, watching this stream. That is the latest on Mason Greenwood, and uh, and that is you. Right. I know I am right. AK. He's been bodied. <laughs> Mustay says, "Wow, you've been bodied, Mustay." <laughs> anyway, right. Okay. Mark Ashton. Mark P says, "Jog on Poch." Guys, thank you so much for everybody who's got in here. I really appreciate you watching. You're a bunch of legends. Let's get some hashtag blazers out and some green and gold emojis raining down in the live chat for these toss pots who currently own our football club. Hopefully we can get them out sooner rather than later, but it's not looking good, is it? They're probably in it for the long run. Fucking blazers out though, mate, because it's a shambles what they've done to this football club. See you later, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Have a great day. Catch you on the next one. Do drop the like on the video before you go. Make sure you hit the subscribe button um, if you haven't subscribed. 
Also, click the uh, bell notification uh, button to get a notification when we post and go live. And also, follow us up on social media at Flying Pig United on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, TikTok at Flying Pig United. Thank you for all the glazes out, guys. Thank you for the, the green and goals. Thank you each individually. John Allen, Mark P, Honey Badger, Mike Clegg, Thugger, Big Up Bob, Amit Kumar, Aaron Duck, what is I, Justin G, Kobe. It's too many of you, but everybody in here, thank you so much for choosing, uh, for tuning in and being a part of the stream today. You're a bunch of heroes. Have a good one. I'll see you soon. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest revelations on this story, but also all the latest Manchester United news in general. So catch you soon. Keep a look out for upcoming content later. Of course, charity stream tonight, guys, around 10 p.m. Charity stream tonight, 10 p.m. on this channel. Come back here, 10 p.m. Charity stream. We're raising money for a good cause. So we'll see you then, guys. Thank you for watching. Have a great evening. Uh, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>